Okay, so with this scene, there's a lot of blocking in the beginning with, with them, you know, looking in the mirror and kind of checking himself out. Like, right. how do you handle that in an audition? Well, the, the, the beauty of this is it's an audition that you're going into, and it's a film audition. You pretty much can lose punctuation and lose most of all the action that's done within the page because the focus is going to be on you as a close-up. So you want to do as least movement as is possible because you're usually reading with just somebody that's just putting, digging their head on the script and just reading it through, right? So, all right, so that's what you've got to concern yourself with. You just find out information about the character and where they live. That's what that information is for. It's not about your blocking because you're not going to be able to block. You don't want to leave the camera because then they're not seeing you. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? So, that's what you've you got to do. Look for hints of anything that will give you that make that character more full and more full inside your head. Okay. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so I'm Slate. Um, I am Christina. I'm reading for Josh. Awesome. I can see you. Good, good. Do I look okay? Stop, stop, stop posing for a sec. Uh, okay, now you're okay. I haven't been on a date in forever. You'll be fine. Can you ask me some date questions? What? Please, I need to practice. Sh sure. Um, okay, um, what do you do? Oh, boy. You think he's going to ask me that? Yes, he's going to ask that. Do you have an answer? No, I do. It's just, um, I don't know if it's windy enough. I'm an engineer specializing in the human condition. Just say I'm a doctor. Right. Okay, simple. Gotcha. Okay, um, why don't you ask me a question? Oh my god, yeah, you're right. Okay. <laughs> I haven't even thought of those yet. I'm screwed. Okay. No. Okay, what's, no. What's your... It shouldn't be this hard. What are you doing? It's harder than it looks. You come up with one. Okay. Um, where do you want to travel? Oh my, that is good. That's a good question, yeah. <laughs> okay, now look, just just relax, right? Be, be yourself. Right. Basically, be myself. Be myself. Be yourself. Stick, stick with the first one. Stick with the first one. You like this one? Uh, that was the second one. Y your normal voice. Oh. <clears throat> look, look, look. I know, I know how it feels weird getting back into the game, but even if this date goes bad, you'll have other dates. Will I, Kevin? Will I? I don't live in a world where they hand out dates like some t-shirt at a 5K, okay? I have to earn my dates. I spend five weeks messaging this guy, and I shall not be the... From the website, that should not be uh, an anonymous dating website. And yes... She's only a 2% match in my life, but you know what? I will turn this C-minus relationship into an A-plus one. Damn it. Are you done? Yes. No. Wait. I will not sit down at... Yeah, that was it. Good. Are you okay? <laughs> oh, I gotta mess up the lines a little bit there. <laughs> That's all right. You're there for your work, not for the exact lines, not there, because the writer's not in the room right now, and if he is, he understands. You're trying to work. So that's the most important thing when you're running through that. Just always keep your head in the game. As long as you do a flow through, and uh, your lines get, use it. You did, you use the intention, you use the energy of the scene, and it, you're in a state. So losing lines, that's just a part of it. You use everything you can. Um, this is a really good scene for you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Do you have any notes like what? Because it kind of felt like, I don't know, like a little, I don't know if flop's the right word, but. Um, I think, uh, if anything, uh, it would be great while you're working it, while you're not in house yet, is to really go up for the laugh. Go, do, do a read through that you're really going for the laugh. That you're going for the funny. You're actually attacking it. Okay. Just to give spice to places that you, you, when you decide to do it at the pace you want it, you're going to know those things are the certain hits. And in your mind, it'll remember that and it'll keep you focused on going towards those peaks. Okay. So, you know, that's kind of what you meant by that. You know, that you felt that it could have been more. Because it is, because she is stressed out. But don't, don't overwork it. So you're doing it at a good monotone. You're doing kind of a monotone, nice medium, nice real comedy. Do one up, so then you kind of can find some peaks and valleys that you can play with, depending on who you're reading for. Because you could be reading for the most real show ever. 
So you know, you just got to be smooth and, and be real and be really in there. Or you can be working for more of a farce, you know, the two broke girls, and the two broke girls is one punchline after another. So you're going to kind of have to push your read into that direction. That's what doing the research is all about, is looking, you know, going, seeing the show, just checking out their vibe and trying to capture it so you fit in to that particular show. Okay. Okay. So we can play on a, a nice, let's go for comedy, let's just okay. really work it. Okay. <clears throat> I can see you. Good. Okay. Do I look okay? Will you stop posing for a sec? Oh, now you look okay. <laughs> I haven't been on a date in forever. You'll be fine. Can you ask me some date questions? What? <laughs> Please, I need, I need to practice. Sure, um, okay. Uh, what do you do? Oh boy. Do you think he's gonna ask that? Yes, I think he's gonna ask that. Do you have an answer? No, I do. I just don't think it's good enough. I'm an engineer specializing in the human condition. Look, okay, I just say I'm a doctor. Right, okay, simple. Gotcha. Okay, why, why don't you ask me a question? Oh my god, yes, you're right. No. I haven't even thought of those yet. I am screwed. No. Look, it shouldn't be this hard. <laughs> what are you doing? It's harder than it looks. You come up with one. Okay, um, where do you want to travel? Oh my god, that's good. Yeah, simple though, you know? <laughs> just, just relax, okay? Just be yourself. Right, yes, obviously. Myself. Myself. My, myself. 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 Just stick with the first one. Myself. No, that was, that was the second one. Stick with the, the real voice, the, that one. <clears throat> and look, you know, I know how it feels. It feels weird getting back into the dating game, but, but even if, if your date goes bad, you, you can, you're still going to be able to go on another date. <laughs> Will I, Kevin? Will I? Yeah. I don't live in a world where they hand out dates like a five, on a 5K, like some t-shirt, okay? I live in a world where you have to put in the work and you have to put in the effort, okay? I've spent five weeks messaging this guy and I'm not on a site that I'm not going to name, an anonymous online website, and yes, he's only a 72% match, oh, and I've been oh, okay. members all my life, and by golly, I can say, I know, I will turn this C minus relationship into an A plus one. Are you done? Yes. No, wait. And I will not sit down at... Yeah, that was it. Good. You okay? Birdie, birdie, that was good. That was awesome. Yeah, you know, by, you know, when you pick up those stakes too, you kind of get out of your head. Yeah. But it also gives you like a signpost, right? Because you're like, once you've gone through it at that big level, you kind of remember that feeling. And it's weird. It's like a, a, a lot of people like a, on, on stage, when you get your costume on stage, Sometimes that's really when it all really crystallizes. Same thing when, when you're reading. When you're reading, you got to put on a few coats of the read so it can kind of get you into that place where your mind knows where it's going so you're not planning on what's going to be funny. You're letting the emotion ride you through because you remember the feeling of the scene. So that's kind of a really nice way to do it because it, it just and exacerbates certain situations and you get in there. And then don't be afraid that when he goes, when he goes at you, the funny is when you go off at that moment, to be so dead serious and go for those extremes of like being brutally scary almost. Okay. Without using screaming to do it though. Yeah. You, or you think, it's funny. I'll, I'll cut you. And that's kind of that complete transition because then he's like, are you okay? <laughs> you're going to kill me. So you know what I mean? Yeah. That's the fun thing to change. And it's all about that. It's all about that. When you're working with people, it's all about that dichotomy. You know, one of my best uh, monologues in the world that I ever did was uh, uh, about a janitor in the Twin Towers. But he comes out and he's just affable, very shy, kind of just getting through this monologue. And it's funny and it's just endearing and charming. And then he throws a punch when he flips the switch and says, I was there when that first plane hit. And then all those judgments that are made because I'm a janitor, because he's Latino, whatever judgments you're making as an audience member, all bets are off. Because yeah. everybody had an experience. That's called drama. That's called compelling. So always look for those compelling moments in a scene. It could be that small that you teeter-totter yeah. and catch people off guard. Yeah, no, I like that because it's kind of like, at least how I'm doing it, it's like, 
kind of bubbly and nervous and insecure. And, that's and then great. it's like, Ugh. right. And it's great. <laughs> and you want to come right back to that because that's who you are. Your just insecurity is getting you to that ugly state that we talked about that people get yeah. to. You get to the rock bottom and then you're not so nice anymore. <laughs> you know, when I quit drinking, I wasn't very nice anymore. <laughs> And it was ugly, but it took a while because I had to realize who I am. That wasn't who I am. So therefore, you have to flip. Oh, oh I'm sorry. You're helping me and I'm treating you like that. Yeah. No, I like that because I've been kind of playing it like, you know, a little neurotic. But I like that because it's very different. Yeah. And, and you keep your neurotic. How people will do and it. you keep the fun neurotic at the beginning. That's you. That's, yeah. that's the one you want to go back to because people will tell you, no, that's not. You shouldn't be that way. You're kind of neurotic. Who are you? That's how I am. And if I yeah. fall in love with somebody, I want them to like that part, not uh, put on bullshit. So yeah. those are the things. I like that. You know, I mean, just, because I am getting, I like keep messing up that stupid line. Well, I kind of want, I don't know where they end up. That was great, the uh, Janner thing you added, because I can add that monologue. Do you ever see, do you ever see it? No. It was like the top five. You just of put uh, the author's, Rick, Rick Nahara's name on it. Uh, oh, yeah, I'll take your channel. It's like, it's, a, it's fucking awesome because it comes out and, of nowhere. And that, that is, that monologue is three minutes long. That you is can't tell, though. No, but I'm saying, no it, no, it is supposed to be. So I, I edited down to that. Oh, but okay. You could imagine how powerful it is with the three minutes. Oh, but just the fact that it's like, oh, this fucking jab is funny. Hey, you know, hey. Hey. And then it's like, oh, shit. Whoosh. And then you go on to keep sweeping. Yeah. Well, it was cool. It's like, yeah, that's my job. Yeah, I love that. That monologue was just a kindred. That, you know, one of those, <laughs> one of those pieces in your life as an actor that you just got. In your yeah. Bones, you know? I did it for a New York uh, uh, teacher that came through SAG. I smoked that guy. Because I knew he was from New York, and I used my best piece, and he was just like, okay, damn, because everybody else was pretty ragged. Maybe and, ask basic questions, too, about you know, how do I audition. Are we ready? Are we on? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Um, I start with a question. Start with yep. questions? Okay, cool. Um, like, is it... For an audition, is it super important to be completely off book? Is is it okay to look down a couple times? Um, there's several ways to go about this, and it really has got to deal with your personality. It depends on how well you can memorize. It's how well you have a skill of line lifting. Sometimes either or plays into your favor. I always say it's always better to be overprepared and try to let go of those lines before you get into the room, but the problem with doing that is most of the time with actors is that we get stuck on a read. And say we kill it, but the director goes, you know what, I need you to change a couple things. And then you're like, yeah, you do the scene, and you haven't realized, yet you have not changed anything. So, here's the balance. <laughs> what I like to do is, of course, we don't have a lot of time usually for auditions. You've got to try to do it at a pace that you can control. As soon as you get that script, you read it over three or four or five times. You read it over, just to read it over. Then, study it. Look into it. Get deep into what you're doing. So you know the motivations, you know all that, because all that's got to be settled in your head before the lines are settled. Once you settle all those things, memorize your lines, and then you got to put it away and fumble through it when you're just doing your daily chores. I like doing lines when I'm brushing my teeth, I'm in the, in the bathroom, because those things throw you off. It's like, you know, it's like wax on, wax off, or the pat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. So those are the things, and it's really up to you. Listen, if, if it works that you are completely ready to go, and do it because your goal is to get them to give you an adjustment or to hire you. And the thing is, if you give you, you just got to be super prepared or be bold enough to go, okay, uh, I got your adjustment. Um, can you give me a second? Uh, can, can we do a quick run through? Something like that to be able to go, yeah, just so I can change my speeds. And that's, as li that's all the explanation you need. I'm like, yeah, can I just change my speed, you know, so I can get out of that read. That way they know that you know, and that makes you a pro. So those are two things. If you get better at really just kind of letting those words go and not really, not really getting into it, because most of the times you get into a room and you'll say, oh, this is this guy that he played baseball his life and he always wanted to find love, but he was always on the road. And it's about love. You're going, okay, is this baseball player? He's a complete jerk. Uh, the girl, he, he wants love, but the girls that he does, he just beats the hell out of. Oh. Oh. <laughs> So changing speeds is much more difficult. So try not to make too many judgments. When they only give you a little bit of lines and a little bit of direction, it's yours. You don't have to. They're not giving you a script because we're not leads yet. They're just giving you that learn and do what you got to do. Learn as much as you can if it's a show about it. But otherwise, be super loose. Be super flexible. And when you're learning your lines, 
do it, uh, sarc do it sarcastic, do it funny. Do it as many different ways as you can because if they hit you with that, you're like, oh, I remember when I did that read. Oh, okay. And then you can fall into line better. You know, obviously it's best. It's really hard to tell somebody, can you give me a second to do it? But it's really something that you need to do, empowering yourself as an actor. They're there because they need a problem solved. So don't be afraid, just be succinct. Okay? Yeah. Oh, okay, oh, that's great. Make sure you explain it so that's what you kind of want. Can you just give me a second to read through it and change my speed? Yeah, of course I'll say yeah. Because then they're playing with you. And if they want to see more, that means that they want you to do better. They yeah. want you to get the part. So you can't get up for the job. <laughs> you got to go grounded. Because now you got it. You don't have to do any more work but listen. You did the job. No more actor. Listen. Then you're, then you're the actor that follows direction. And that gets you the job. That's a really good way to look at it. Like you okay. already... You booked it you because they asked it. for something. So now follow direction. If you don't, you're not going to get the job. He's going to go, damn, I just told him to smile at the end and he forgot. Yeah, no, that is, it is hard. It's a talent to do. Super hard. Yeah. So that's why you, when you're on your own and you're working with teachers and things, put yourself in those positions. Ask your teachers, if they don't do that, to put you in awkward positions because there's no purpose to rehearsing if you're not in an awkward position. That's what auditions are. They're awkward, hard, and unforgiving. So the less pressure you put on yourself and know that you're going into a room that is yours to light up, and you let go of remembering lines, you let go of all that, because you know, you've done, if you've done the work, you've done the work. If you happen to lose a line, well, you're, oh well. That was part of the character. Yeah. Maybe it'll get you the job, you just really don't know. If you can, you, if you can fumble through a good, a, a good mistake and get through, they'll love you even more. You know, that's just the key. We always forget that we think we need to know what they want. What are you looking for? They don't know. That's why they audition nine million people. It's, it's, an, it's ridiculous, right? It's an abundance, it's an excess. Because the problem is, is when you have that much, you're looking for that person that you dreamt of that night. In your dream that he came to you in a vision and you're waiting for him to walk in. And that's really what they do. It's gotta be that perfect connection. And not only that, five other people are judging. So you've got to take the power away from that and know that you're going for it. That's the best you can do. Don't be an ass also. Don't, you know, don't go in and do something completely ridiculous because then, then you're defeating the purpose. But if you've done your work, attack and then be free. That's it. Because if they didn't ask you, it doesn't even mean that you didn't get a job if they didn't ask you. But if they didn't ask you, you're fine. You said, I did my job. They didn't need anything else. If they ask you, you book the job, now follow direction so you know, so they know you can take direction. It's a lot of money being, you know, being thrown around for you to be slacking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, that's a good way to look at it, um, especially, you know, like trying it a bunch of different ways. Sometimes I forget. I'm just so focused on this is what is, my, what is the choice I'm going to make. This is the choice I'm going to make. And this is what I'm going to do. It's like you forget, like, look at it different ways. Yeah, because that way it breaks you of, of, of being like everybody else. Remember, look, everybody else that's auditioning is really good, too. You wouldn't be there if you're not at least a little good and somebody had some faith in you. Yeah. So we're all good and everybody's going to read it a certain way. Let's take the keen example of uh, Christopher Walken. Why he was special? He has this meter. He has his own rhythm of speaking that when he creates, when he just makes choices on lines, that's funny. We talk about that's him all the time, funny. right? Of course, because he is the main example. But the problem is that actors will be like, oh, i got to find my own weird way. No. Yeah. This is his way, naturally. So what is your way? If you're with friends and they, they, they say, dude, you trip me out when you do that, that's your way. Find that way and that's your poignant way. And that's how you should interpret work. Because as an actor, you're not, look, you're not, you're not, you're not going to be paid. You're not cre really truly creative until your name pays for everybody's paychecks. <laughs> it's true. Right? So what the problem is is that they're not going to give you that chance to do that. In theater, you get a chance to be characters. So forget characters. This is you being a plumber. This is you if you went to the military. So put to make things funny, put yourself in the military. I always think to myself, I would have been in the military. I would have been so weird. I would have been this artistic neat freak. And those guys would have beat the pants off of me for a good while until they realized that I'd never give up. And they'd go, dude, you're cool. I know that about myself. You know, so that's what we need. That's what you need to investigate. And a lot of times we don't, we investigate in others opinions of us or others ideals when you haven't sorted out your own and that's why so many teachers become gurus because they help young people and actors that have chips on their shoulder you know get through the day sometimes but that shouldn't be the job of a teacher that's a therapist's job yeah. 
but you need to investigate yourself as hard as you would investigate a character. Because if you do that, you know yourself totally. And if you go in the room and you did your best and you were you and you knew it, you know, you'll know it. And you walk on and you went, hey, if that wasn't what they wanted, they missed out, man, because that was it. That was me. Me and me acting. Not just me, that it's just you. It's a weird catch-22. It was you investigated. It was you with purpose. It was you understanding that you're doing something on camera for others. You're still an entertainer, but you got to let go of being an actor. It took me a long time leaving theater because I played so many roles growing up. And I'm like, I create these characters and I walk if I'm like, oh my God, I'm working too hard. On camera, it's all about all your internal. Because if you do all the homework, it'll come through and it's, and it's a hard thing to learn because you can't feel it. People see it. That's why you have to have a good teacher. That's why you have to have good friends that don't bullshit you and say, man, when you did that, you moved me. Yeah. And you have to be able to identify it. If you can't identify it, then you gotta go back to the drawing board and go, why was that compelling? And know that, oh, I did all this research. Oh, I rehearsed this way. And repeat the process. Because when you book a job, repeat the process. When you go to your next audition, because that's what got you the job. All those little things you did. It's not exactly how, you, you know, it's not exactly that what was written or how you broke it down. It was your process. You went through the motions. You did your rehearsals. You found your way. Find your way. There's a million ways to learn lines. It's just got to be yours. When you do your own writing, is it easier to memorize something? Have you ever written something? And oh, yeah, memorize? yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, it is. Somebody it's else's word? Talk. Uh huh. Somebody <laughs> else's words? Oh, boy. And if you're, I got a role as a guy working for Intel, a, C, a CFO. Wow. The lines in that. So I had to get in and I had to let go of my ego and realize, okay, this is really technical. Luckily, the crew was amazing. And they go, hey, we can put it up on a, on a teleprompter. I'm like, absolutely. They got that up on the teleprompter and annihilated. Looked like I knew what I was talking about. Like, I've been in that company for 30 years. <laughs> know your shortcomings and ask. Forget it. It's their job to make you look good. And it's your job to know your limitations. So all that comes into play. Know how you memorize. Know how you work. But, of course, the key is, is that if you don't work, you don't get under the pressure that you want. So try to put yourself under the pressure. Whether it's with your teacher or whoever. Just ask a friend. Go be brutal. So you can just feel it. Even if it isn't perfect, at least you'll feel weathered. You'll feel like, okay, I've gone through the storm. Just go in and do it. And then you can really let go. What does a musician say? I don't think about how it, my fingers just know where to go. And that's where you want to get as an actor. That you just know yourself emotionally so well that you know when you have to, uh, or, or those little micro movements. It's just a little harder on film because you've got to be so contained. Yeah. Movement is the death of actors on film. End of story. I know. I notice, like, when I'm when I'm like more uncomfortable, like me doing a scene, I like, you know, and yeah. I see it when I was w watching back all this footage to find footage for my reel. I'm like, oh, yep, yeah, mm, nope, mm. and then I'm like, am I like, why were you moving so much? Yeah, because it, it's, re it's a release of energy. And my my uh, when I was a kid in college, my teacher uh, mind was in my fists. And she would rail me, what are you doing with your fans? <laughs> and thank God for her. Because then I, I wasn't channeling all the nervous energy into my fingers. I then released it, and then she made me realize, it was like, that's the thing. You got to feel so loose. You got to feel like there's only, the only way people can see you is through a, 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 you know, a secret camera. And the director can't see you. And, and you're there. And your partner is your importance. But unfortunately, it's hard in our business when you're trying to make money at it, and that's the key, yeah. and you're getting up a little bit and you're starting to get one-liners or five lines, or you know, you're trying to get those day player roles. You never get a chance to interact like that because if you're lucky enough to be working with the lead, they don't have time for you. You've got to get on set and you've got to really get your rehearsal in when they're setting the lights and the cameras and be ready because you don't know how this actor's going to attack. So that little playfulness doesn't happen on a paid set. It'll happen on an independent set, and you guys are all playing together. But unfortunately, most people want to just be making money already, and they don't really go through the route of doing projects for free, for little money, to get the experience of collaboration, real collaboration on a set. It's different from theater. If you've done only theater collaboration, it doesn't translate. Yeah. It's a different it's animal. Really different. It's a different animal. So that's why you seek out teachers on camera teachers to do things and hopefully they do things in a way that prepare you for that 
Because, you know, you're working as an actor every day by growing older and studying human beings around you. That's how you're growing yeah. and putting yourself in situations and, and, and being, a being a lover of humanity. Good, bad, or indifferent. Because you never know when you have to play a role that maybe you don't want to play, uh, that you don't like. Yeah. But if you're true about your art, you've got to find the redeeming quality in a pedophile, in a rapist, in a murderer, and realize that in their mind there's something off that, lets them, that makes them think that they're right. And they're righteous about what they're doing. You're not saying, oh, it's good to be, it's okay to be a rapist. No. You're hopefully, if the script's good, you can change that. Hopefully, it's, there's a redeeming reason why you're playing this role. Then that's your own moral compass. You're just doing it to be a complete, demoralized, awful human being. Then there's some questions about you. Because <laughs> yeah. we all have that in us. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that, think about it. Have some, you know, have some... I lost the word. Have trust in you. Yeah, Everyone justify. Feels justified in yeah, have a justify right that you're that you're you're important enough that even though the rule seems fun, that maybe in the whole concept of the thing, you may have to go. No, you know what? I don't like what you're saying. And we don't do that as actors. We just want to take a job. Oh, don't yeah. do that either. You know, don't do that. I know there's sometimes that it happens, but make sure it's justified for yourself. You know, no, I'm going to learn something. They could be this. They could be that. But I'm going to protect myself because nobody's looking out for us on set. Nobody. They'll tell you before you go into the room, like, exactly what they want. If it's anything different than no, the norm. Right. But do you just typically, like, hi, I'm Christina, and then... Right, yeah, so that's a good question. That's the thing, you know, if you're not told what to do on your slate, they will tell you, inevitably, they will tell you, look, okay. we're just going to slate, you do your profiles, and that's it. Uh, so that's what you're going for, and that's what you'll do. Most of the time, it's that. Uh, or if not, they'll just say, look, we just want you to slate your name, and you just slate your name. When you slate your name, you finish your, your name, and then just get right into the scene. Okay. As soon as possible, which means grounding. It doesn't mean uh, doing uh, too much. No, movement is your death right. when you're on a close-up, not when you're on a master. Now, a lot of people just don't really understand that that's the difference. When you're on a master, it's more like theater. Not a lot like theater, but there's more movement yeah. involved. When, you're not, when, when you got your tight, which is here, or extreme close-up, and if it's an extreme, they'll definitely let you know because you okay. really got to know your game. That usually only happens to people that have absolutely perfect faces. <laughs> not one. <laughs> so uh, the thing is, is that um, then when you finish saying your name and you've introduced, you introduced yourself and that was all that, that was asked for, then right there to immediately gather yourself, see your first line. Why not? Even if it's memorized. Sometimes it gets freaky to know your lines and look at your lines. It gets weird. You get... You don't trust yourself because you have a line. So if you're not, just kind of really gather yourself. Get that line. Make sure you're following. And then settle in. If it's you or the first line, you have the control. Wait. Take a breath. Look at your partner. Make sure they're there. And start your line and start your scene. If the other person has a line, you've got to be extra ready because they're going to just shoot it at you. When they do shoot it at you, take your time. Look down to your script. Gather it. Think about it. Look at them. Think about it and deliver your line. Those are your moments. Those two first moments are the most important parts of your audition. Because even if you go on and screw up a little later, it doesn't matter. You got that first instinct and moment, they saw that you went through your paces. Again, that adds to you being skilled because you've been listening to teachers and other people that tell you, look, it's very important you do that because it shows confidence, it shows clarity, it shows uh, effort, it shows work. It takes a lot of effort to do a scene, a lot. That's why when you get older and you're better as an actor, you really don't want to audition because it takes so much out of you that you're just like, it's just like we're getting older. You know, I don't want to run. I know because when I was 20, it was easier. <laughs> yeah. It's hard. It's emotionally draining. If you're putting it in, if you're just getting it together and just being a wise ass, but nobody that's at the top does an audition, prepares for an audition, just winging it. Very rare. Very rare. Super rare. So, so that's the key. Just know your parameters and know that that's the way that it works. You always go in, you're always going to have a slate. It's just a matter of they're going to ask more of you. They want to see your hands, if they want to know your agent, or they want to know whatever, little, little, they'll ask, they'll ask, they'll ask. Usually a slate is like, yeah, just hello, Joe Berto. Okay. All right, so I'll do it one more time. Okay. Hi, I'm Christina Bertzel. Nice. Hi, I'm Christina Bertzel. Okay. I can see you. Good, good. Uh, do I look okay? Stop, stop posing. Oh. Okay, yeah, now you look great. I haven't been on a date in forever. Oh. 
Okay, you'll be fine. Can you ask me some date questions? <laughs> what? Please, I, I need practice. Sure, okay. Um, oh, okay, um, what do you do? Oh boy, you, you, think, you think that they're gonna ask that? Yeah, they're gonna ask that? Wait, do you not have an answer? No, no, I have an answer. I just don't think it, it sounds good enough. Oh, um, I'm an engineer specializing in the human condition. Just, just say you're a doctor. Okay, right, simple. Gotcha. Why, why did you ask me a question? Oh my god. Yeah, you're right. I haven't even thought of this yet. Oh my god, I'm screwed. Oh, you're not screwed. Okay, what? okay. What? what? Look. <laughs> It shouldn't be this hard, okay? All right. What are you doing? It's harder than it looks. Uh, you come up with one. Okay. Where do you want to travel? Oh, Mike, that's good. Yeah. Okay. All right, now, so just relax, okay? Be yourself. Right, yes, obviously. Be myself. Be yourself. Be myself. Be myself. Be myself. Let's stick with the first one. Be myself. No, no, no that's the second one. I, the one with your normal voice. Uh, okay. Right. <laughs> look, look, I know, I know it feels weird, like getting back into the dating game, but, but even if this date goes bad, you'll, you'll have other dates, so. <laughs> Will I, Kevin? Will I? Yeah. Dates? Are just like getting a t-shirt at the end of a 5k. I have to work for them and I've been messaging this guy on a website that she'll be for being anonymous and sure we're only a 72% match. Okay, okay. But okay. I'm gonna turn a C minus relationship into an A plus one. Are you done? Yeah. No. I mean, I will not take this Sitting, or, ugh, yeah, I'm done. Good. Are you okay? <sighs> okay. Good work. All right, and it's great. Here's what you did that was really great, which is, it's great to hear, because people don't tell you these things. So you took the note that I gave you about the, the, that part when you got dead serious, and you took it. And you did what I asked. You're an actor. Great job. So that was the most important thing that happened. Now the adjustment I would make to you is, you work too hard. Funny thing is, <laughs> is that all you had to do is really get down and serious. When you are done, when you are over Mike being a pain in your butt, going, are you serious? Because here's the problem. And it needs to build at a beautiful crescendo, but it's got to be that. You don't need to be so neurotic, even though you are neurotic in the character, you just need to get dead ball serious, like you're talking to somebody that they're, they're gonna know. So that's the only thing, and that'll make it funny, because the more you scare me, and I'm like, oh, okay, then I'm, you're the straight man, I'm the comedy, it flops. Yeah, okay. I think I started out really big, and then I was like, oh shit. Right, where do where I, I go, go where here? do I go from here, <laughs> right? And in improv, in Second City, it's like they say, don't, don't start at the moon, because then you don't, you've already went into space. Always start grounded. So yeah, the thing is, it's got to click for you. And that's why by rehearsing it, you are going to do your scene how it is. And you're going to know organically, you're not going to choose it, when it's going to snap. And you're like, are you, are you telling me that I could find a date? When he says that line, because you're really listening and he says it, you could be, ha ha, yeah, then, hey, are you going to find another date? You could be smiling and then... Really, Kevin? Because I don't get dates as easy as you. It's not like getting a blah, 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 blah. Right. And even taking more of a pause, it's like it breaking your neurotic, bubbly self. Are you still going to date? Really? <laughs> yeah. You fucking think. I've been fucking dealing with this guy for months. It's a pain. So that's the thing. That's where it lands. Don't be afraid to be slower in your rehearsals to speed it up in your performance. TV it costs money. Commercials are 30 seconds. TV shows are 15, 30 minutes. You have to be succinct. I've fallen into that trap. So make sure that you start slow, but get up to pace. 
because the more slow you do it and you, and you understand your emotions, you'll do it faster. And that's what you want, to get really clean. Yeah. Boom, 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 Music, musician, practices, learns his, learns his chords, learns his chords. He's on the show. The drummer's still on beat, he's still on beat. If you slow it down too much, then it's slow. So you know, that whole realization, that's where the acting is. Where he says to you, you can always get another date. It's gotta go. You gotta be like that, you gotta be smiling or, or tripped out, and when he says it, it's just like, blah, it's gotta go that fast. But if you did that slow homework, as soon as you hear that line, it's gonna tick, and you're gonna go, you serious? Because I've been doing this. And it, it'll be seamless. And that's what we're looking for, seamless in motion. Not, not only that the lines are seamless, but that your thoughts are going from the line to the next line, because you're listening and thinking and reacting and listening and thinking and reacting. So you gotta try to break that because it's a technical thing, but you gotta turn it organic. So you gotta practice it. Practice your changing of emotions, because in, in human relationships, we're always constantly looking away or getting angry and not listening, and, but not enacting. You have to analyze your, your truth, and that's the homework that we do, that people forget. Oh, it's just about the lines, it's just about the funny, it's just about, no, it's about your feeling, how you're feeling through that whole thing. So that's the homework, just always go home and feel like you're, you're, you're talking. If you, if you have somebody that relates to that character, ask them to read it for you, it'll give you all the emotion you need. Oh. It'll give you all the through because it's the person you're, you're safe and comfortable with. And of course, you know, uh, record yourself. You gotta see what it looks like. Because you can be making a choice that looks wrong. You gotta know. And if you don't know, ask somebody else. Don't, because sometimes don't make a choice thinking that you know. If you don't know, then bring it to your teacher. Bring it to somebody that, that, that loves watching TV. Say, hey, would you watch this? And they'll give you amazing insight. And then you use what you need and leave and it. And I'm glad about asking like a non-industry person. Yeah, oh, it's, so it's so much more fun. Just like to work on trying it different ways. Yes. Slowing down the pace when you're working exactly. on it so you can speed it up later. Absolutely. You really know the law. Remember to punctuation changes. You don't have to worry about punctuation and blocking. When you're on camera, you're not blocking. Okay. You're on camera. Stay on camera as much as you can. Yeah. Use eye lines. Change your, your sight patterns. Very important. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. Thank you.